In this video, I will be using Google Policy to deploy Visual Studio Code. I'm starting this video from my GitHub page and that's because there are a few bits of information here that I will be using for this video. And I will leave the URL in the description down below. And the group policy that I will be creating will be performing two actions. One of them is to deploy the installation executable file to C program data deployment folder on the client machine. And the other action is to create a run once registry entry for the users. And I'm using run once because in this video I will be using a user wide installer for Visual Studio Code. And that means that the installation needs to be executed by the user. Also, for each setting, I will be setting up item level targeting because I don't want to deploy the settings for the users that already have Visual Studio Code installed. Also, in the bottom of the page, you can find more of my videos that are related to this topic. For example, here you can find videos about my Windows Server setup if you're interested in that. There is also a video about creating Visual Studio Code msi installation file if you want to deploy it as an msi file also the installation file that i'm using in this video is a system wide installer and also there is a video about run once if you want to know more about how it works and now i will start this video by downloading visual studio code executable installation file and for that i will use the link that i have here and like i said i will be using the user installer so i will be selecting the 64-bit version for the user installer. So I will select on x64 and the download should start for me. Then I will go to my downloads folder. And it seems that we have our executable already. And now I will right click on the executable, select copy, and then I will go to VMware Workstation where I have my Windows Server environment. I will minimize the server manager for now and I will move the executable to my desktop and from the desktop I will be moving it to a network share that is accessible to my domain users and the domain computers. So for that I will open file explorer then here I will enter my file server name so it's srv02. Here I have this software share and in this share I will be creating a folder named vs code. I will go inside of it and I will move the executable into this folder. And here you need to make sure that you have the correct NTFS and the share permissions. For example, in my case, if I go to properties, security tab and edit, you can see that here for the NTFS permissions, I have authenticated users with read permissions and I also have the same permissions for my share permissions and authenticated users covers both users and the computers in my domain. And with read permissions, that means that both users and computers that are in my domain are able to access this share and execute files from it. And you also need to make sure that you have the correct permissions. Anyways, I will close all the windows for now. And then I will go to my server manager because now we can start creating our group policy. And for that, I will go to tools, group policy management, I will right click on group policy objects, select new, and I will name the policy deploy VS code and click OK. I will expand group policy objects, right click on the policy that I created and select edit. Here we want to go to user configuration, preferences, Windows settings, and the first setting that I will be modifying is file deployment. And for that, I will click on files. Then I will right click here, go to new and select file. For the action, I will leave it on default. For the source file, we need to provide the location where we currently have our installation executable. And for the destination file, we need to provide the location where we want to deploy it on the client machine. And I have all the values that I will be using in this video in my GitHub page. So I will go back to my GitHub page. And as you can see, I have all the necessary information here. So for the source file, I will copy this location right here. As you can see, it's my file server, the software share, VS Code folder, and then the executable name. Go back to my VMware workstation and paste in the value here. Then for the destination file, I will use the value here. And here, as you can see, I'm using a variable that leads to the program data folder. 
Anyways, I copied the location, go back here, paste in the value. And we are done creating our file deployment. Now we need to set up our item level targeting because we want to deploy this executable only to the computers where the user doesn't have the Visual Studio Code installed. And for that, let's go to common, select item level targeting and then select targeting. And here I will be targeting a registry key that is created during Visual Studio Code installation. So basically, if the key will exist, this group policy setting will not work. And if the key does not exist, then the group policy setting will deploy the file to the computer. So to do that, I will go to new item, registry match. And here on the left side, I will leave everything on default, match type key exists and hive current user. And we need only to provide the key path. So for that, once again, GitHub page, I will copy the value that I have here and move the value here. As you can see, it also appeared here and currently it is saying that is checking if it exists, but we don't, we want the opposite. We want here to, for the value to be does not exist. And for to change that, I will go to item options and here I will select is not. So now it says does not exist and that's what we want. And everything seems to be fine now. So I will click OK apply and okay now let's set up uh, the registry deployment and for that i will select registry right click here go to new and select registry item for the action update is fine hive current user is what we need and we, now we need to provide a key path here we need to provide the location for our once once again we can go to the github page and I co copy the value from here paste it in here for value name it doesn't really matter but i will copy it from the github page anyways and then we need to provide value data and once again github page and copy this value and paste it in here also if you don't know how run once works basically this value that we have here will be executed for the user that has this registry key once during the logon process and i will demonstrate how it uh, how everything works later in this video now once again we'll need to set up item level targeting so for that we need to go to common tab select item level targeting and targeting then a new item registry match leave everything on default on the left side and provide the key path and it's the same key that we used before and once again from exists we need to change it to does not exist so item options and is not so now it checks if the registry key does not exist and if it does not exist it will deploy the registry key i mean registry entries anyways we can click ok here apply here and ok here and we are done creating our group policy so i can close this window i will select the group policy here go to details and for GPO status, I will switch from enabled to computer configuration disabled because this policy only has user settings in it. And I will leave all other settings on default. Now, after creating our group policy, we need to assign it to an organization unit, which is holding our users on which we want to deploy the software. In my case, this will be this organization unit right here, the main users. So to assign the policy, I will click and hold on the policy and then drag and drop it on that organization unit. I will click OK here. As you can see, the policy appeared here. Also, if I expand domain users organization unit, we can see that the policy appeared also here. Now to test this group policy, I will go to one of my client machines that I have here. It's client 02. And here, first thing that I will do, I will go to my C program data folder program data and as you can see uh, currently we don't have a deployment folder and let's also open a registry and for that i will go to start menu and type in registry editor and i will open it without administrative privileges 
Here we want to go to the current user software, Microsoft and Windows and current version. And somewhere here, there should be a run once registry key. Yeah, we have it here. And as you can see, currently we have no values here. So let's update our group policy. So let's go to start menu, search for CMD and open it without administrative privileges. And then I will type GP update. And as you can see, almost instantly deployment folder appeared. If I go inside of it, we can see that we have our executable here. And let's check our registry. As you can see, the key also appeared with this value. And like I said, run once will execute this value right here during the login process. Basically, it will start the sound installation for Visual Studio Code with some installation switches. Also, one thing that you should know that if I delete the key, I mean the entry and the file, from this computer now and then do gp update once again the executable reappeared also let's check the registry and the value also appeared and that's because this user still doesn't have visual studio code installed so every time the group policy updates it will check if the file and the entry exist and if they don't it will deploy the file and the registry entry and this will happen until the Visual Studio code for this user will be installed. Anyways, so we have our executable, we have our registry entry, everything seems to be fine. So let's see if the installation works. So I will close everything. And then I will sign out from this user. Then I will sign back in. I will open task manager to see if I can see the Visual Studio Code installation. And I cannot find it. Oh, it's here. So the installation has started for this user. Now we need to wait a minute or two and see what happens. Or maybe we don't because the process is gone. So I'm pretty sure if I go to my start menu, I will find Visual Studio Code somewhere here. Oh, here it is. So I will try to open it. And it seems to be working just fine. Now, if I go to File Explorer and back to my C program data folder, we still, we still have the deployment folder. And now let's check our registry. We currently have no values here. So now if I update my group policy. You can see that the registry entry is not appearing. Also, let's maybe delete uh, the folder and try to update the policy once again. Yeah, also the folder is not appearing for this user. I can refresh a few times and nothing is happening. And same goes for the registry entry. And that's because of the item level targeting. We have Visual Studio Code installed. So it, it, it's not redeploying the files and the registry key for this user. And that's it basically for the software deployment using this method. And this software deployment method only works for software that doesn't need administrative privileges to install. And there are many software now like this. For example, most of the text editors doesn't need administrative privileges to install. Same goes for most of the browsers and chat programs. Also, there is one big advantage for deploying software in this way because everything that we need for the software installation we have on our local machine and by everything i mean this registry key for run once and the deployment files that we get in the program data and that means that after updating group policy the user can disconnect from the network go back to home and open the laptop and the software will install on his machine and the computer will not need to have access to 
company network or to be connected to a VPN. For example, here I have this client 02 and let's update the group policy on this machine. So I will open command line and do gp update to make sure that we have the executable and also the registry key. And after updating the policy, I will modify the settings for this virtual machine and I will disconnect the network adapter. So currently it doesn't have any network connection. So if I try to, for example, ping Google DNS servers, we cannot access it. Same goes for my domain controller. I cannot reach it. I cannot reach my file server, but I have everything on my local computer that is necessary to install Visual Studio Code. So if I close this window and sign out from this user, and then sign back in. I will open Task Manager once again to see if the installation has started for this machine. And it seems that it did start, so let's wait a bit. And it seems that the installation is done, so I will go to Start menu, All Apps, and I can see Visual Studio code here. So everything seems to be working just fine. The installation finished successfully, even though we don't have network access to our domain controller or our file server. And that makes this deployment method very good if you have many users that are working from home using a VPN client, because when they connect to VPN, they can refresh group policy. And after sign out and sign in, they can install the software because other deployment options in most cases require that you have access during the startup or during the logon to the file server. And that's basically it for this video. In the future videos, I will show you how to deploy Visual Studio Code using other software deployment tools. So like and subscribe if you want to see that and see you in the next one.